Hey guys, welcome to the benchmark of the Sony Xperia S. I have one right here, and um, I know most of you are probably wondering how it performs with that Snapdragon S3 since it's the last generation Qualcomm processor, and it does pretty good. So let's just take a look here, and I'm going to run a variety of different benchmarks for you. Uh, we're going to start with Quadrant Standard. This is a benchmark that we always use just to see how, uh, how it performs, but Really, in, in the real world, these benchmarks don't mean anything. It's all about how the device performs for you. But we use these as just numbers and see how it performs uh, compared to other devices. So um, my Galaxy Note usually hits right around 4,000 stock, 3,900 or so. And um, compared to other devices, actually, this device is very well under the benchmarks considering uh, the S3 processor. So it looks like that Sony has done very well with optimizing the gingerbread software. So let's take a look at this. So you can see it's running pretty smooth. Here 40 plus frames per second. And you can see that's running very smooth as well. Thirty plus frames per second. And here's the benchmark result, and it results in it's hard to see, but there it is, thirty-one twenty-three. So that does pretty good. Now here's the Nenomark two, and we can see the frames per second on graphics. So I'll let you see this. and it looks pretty smooth and there it is 37 frames per second pretty good so let's move on to the Antutu benchmark and we're gonna do let's see it comes up to 6557 so that's not too bad either and we'll compare that to some of the other devices. You can see the Transformer Prime up at the top. And 6557, so a little bit above the Galaxy Note. So here's Linpack, and we're going to run some multi-threading. And from what I saw, it's running about 40 to mid-40s. Um, I had a fluke here running 61, but uh, Every time I ran it after that, it gives me something in the mid 40s, 40 to mid 40s. So that's not too bad, nothing mind blowing, but this Xperia S, it seems like it holds its own. There's about 45 right there. So let's go on to Neo Core. And this is an old school one made by Qualcomm, but uh, we'll let this run right now. And you can see that it's pretty smooth. There's some smoke effects, and things to, seem to be running really smooth. So and at the end of this it will show a frames per second mark and there's some movement there and that seems to be real smooth as well And let's see, it's almost 60 frames per second, so that's pretty good. But since these benchmarks are made by Qualcomm, it seems to favor the Qualcomm devices. So let's run Velamo real quick. And this is the one that runs a, a big gamut of different things. Uh, this is a really long benchmark, so I'm going to cut some of it just so you don't have to sit there and watch it all. But it does do multiple ones, and this is also made by Qualcomm. So that's the only thing about these is that non-Qualcomm devices tend to not score as high, but they do sometimes, especially like the Exynos processors and things. But you can see here that uh, this is 3D, and it's going to first test the graphics. And this is running an Adreno 220 graphics, 
and that's been out for quite some time. Really no stutters here or anything. And there's some other things running, arrays. And this also runs Sun Spider. So you can see that running. Some more benchmark and looks like some kind of web browsing here. This benchmark probably runs about four to five minutes when you run it. So I'm just going to clip these. And there you go, 1168 looks like. And let's see how this stacks up compared to the other devices. You can't see this, but I took a picture here so you can see. And there it is, and it actually hits above the Galaxy Nexus. So real world performance wise, it's best to see the graphics running on a game. So let's, let's run it on a game and see how good it is. Here's Samurai 2, and you can see how fluid it is. No stutters or anything, it's running very quickly. And you can see exactly how good the gameplay is. I have not had a problem where this uh, Xperia S couldn't run a game or it was stuttering or anything to that effect. I mean, granted that it is running such a high resolution screen that it doesn't have any problems. So you can see here it's running very smooth. No issues at all. I've run Shadow Gun. Everything else that is... Uh, graphically intensive it tends to hold it really well no problem and that's coming up in the full review I do have some other games that I do take a look at but if you're afraid that this graphics processor won't do it I wouldn't be afraid because it has no problems handling it and you can see here that it is running really well no stutters or anything in the gameplay all right so more to come on the Xperia S. Please subscribe to my channel and like my videos. I have a lot more coming up on Xperia S. The full review is coming up. Thank you for watching and I will see you later.